Good morning. Uh, today is on Thursday and uh, it's time for English. There are questions that I gave on Tuesday and I assume that I did them as we agreed. I, I want to appreciate all those who brought their work on time. Now, the first question was, my English teacher hardly ever comes to class late. And that is question 21 and 22, the year 1990. Now, hardly ever has uh, its own synonyms. Even though we are looking at vocabulary as the key area, but the vocabulary we are going to measure on synonyms and antonyms. The synonym of the word hardly, hardly, without looking at the context, we will have rarely, we will have scarcely, seldom, and barely. These are the key words when it comes to hardly. Now, hardly ever, that means it's, he comes once in a blue moon, according to, if I may put it in a, in a phrase, once in a blue moon. Now, hardly, which word will go with hardly according to this context? We will have rarely because of the frequency. Scarcely is on the availability. For instance, we scarcely eat beans in our house. That means you rarely eat, you hardly eat, or you seldom eat. Of course, I'm not going to the details of its uh, antonyms, but uh, in the next uh, lesson, we'll look at the antonyms of the same. Now, so our answer for question number one is rarely. Question number two, why do you make that mistake over and over? Over and over means you're doing it repeatedly. You do something once, twice, thrice, four times, we say that's over and over. So, number two, over and over. Question 22 of 1990 will mean repeatedly. It will mean repeatedly. Now, something we also have to be cautious about. We have the word repeatedly and we have repetition. Now, repeatedly is an adverb. Repetition is a noun. Those are two things you have to differentiate. We don't have repetition. It will be repetition. This is the noun of repeatedly. Good. Uh, so our answer for number two will be repeatedly. Then for number three, that is for questions three, four, and five, choose the words that can best replace the underlined word. That is the year 1999, number 16, and up to 18. An armed group of people raided the village and terrorized and robbed the people of their property and money. Now, what is an armed group? Can we say it's a mob? Can we say it's a gang? No. There is only one word we can use. When a group is armed and ready to harm, we'll say that's a gang. So, our number three, we have the word gang. This group is armed. Armed group. Remember, these are not police. It's not a group of soldiers, no. These are just rowdy people armed to harm. That is as far as uh, armed group is concerned. So the answer will be gang. What about mob? Mob is a group that is believed to cause justice. That's why we call it mob justice. So mob is a group of people. And if they are going to harm a person, then we are going to call that mob justice, even though that one is not allowed in our country, Kenya. Question number three. Question number four, for that matter. The pupils bought pencils, pens, rubber and exercise books now basically these are pupils so we cannot say this office supply but what do we call things like rubbers pencils pens papers and files because most of them are used in office we call them stationary and remember stationary stationary is not the same as stationary The first word stationary refers to writing, stroke, office, uh, documentation, documentation supplies. I've used keywords there. We have documentation, so they help us in either storing documents 
or in producing the documents, and then I've used the word writing, and then I've used supplies. So this means these are just things that will aid us to have documents or to store documents. For instance, you've talked about pencils, pens, rubbers, files, rulers, and so on. Now, what about the second word, stationary? Even though in pronunciation, the two of them, we have stationary and stationary, we try to differentiate by saying stationary for the first one, second one stationary. This one just means immobile, not moving. Immobile, not moving. Being there for a long time. For instance, uh, the bus has been stationary for the last two years. This bus has been stationary for the last two years. It means it has not been moving, it has been there. Then we'll have, so our answer for question number three of the year uh, 1999, that's number 16 up to 18, our answer for question number three is stationary with an E and not with an A. Then we have, our new house has plenty of chairs, tables, beds, and cupboards. So chairs, tables, beds, and cupboards, this we call furniture. Be informed that we don't have furniture. We have furniture because it's a group word. So that is it. That's furniture. If you look at the other options that were given, we have things like luggage. We also don't have luggages. Of course, luggage, these are things that you carry when you're traveling maybe from one place to another. Maybe you're traveling uh, to the US or to Germany or to Dubai. You'll have some things to carry with you. We call that luggage. Then we have other things uh, like uh, things. The word things itself is not, that one is not essential. It's not uh, a group word. It just refers to many commodities put together. Then we have the next number. There is a lovely garden full of oranges, mangoes, pawpaw, and avocado trees. Now, here we have mentioned fruits. Here we have mentioned fruits. And which fruits are these? We have pawpaw, just but to name a few. We have pawpaw, we have mangoes, and so on. Now, when you have only fruits in a list, growing in an area, we call that an orchard. So the answer here is orchard. The answer here will be orchard. These are garden. With fruit trees. Mainly fruit trees. Now, why are we not including flowers? Because once you include flowers, you include uh, things like onions or vegetables, then we will be referring to horticultural crops. And here, this will now be something else. When you mention fruits and mention flowers, and not fruits and vegetables, that will be grocery. But for an orchard, it mainly deals with fruits. And just to remind you, a person who sells fruits is not a green grocer, that is a fruiter. We have to know that. Uh, one who deals with flowers only, we call that a florist, because they specialize in dealing with flowers only, or dealing in flowers only. Then we'll have our next question, uh, still on vocabulary. Uh, that is the year 2002, number 17 and 18. Number six uh, for our listing. The group of players gathered around the coach. When you are in a group and going to play, there is one word that you are going to refer to yourselves, and that's a team. What about a group of singers? Those who are going to sing, we call that uh, a choir. And then those who sing and play musical instruments, we call that a band. And of course, we have our letter, uh, letter B, which says crowd. Of course, crowd is a general name for a group of people. Then we have the next one, without wasting time. Ali's performance was extremely good. Now, we have the word good. We have the word good. We have the word good, and we have extremely, extremely good. Here, the word good as an adjective, this is what we call a relative word. It doesn't show how high or low it is. It's just basic, good. But when it's extremely good, it means it's beyond just being good. It's beyond being very good. We call that excellent. We call it excellent. So anytime your work is marked and you realize a teacher has written there, excellent, the teacher means that work is almost perfect, if I can use that word. Then we have our next word, which is um, 
most people appreciate help given to them. So appreciate is the key word. Appreciation has the almost four words that go hand in hand with it. And we'll start with the first one. Appreciate. So we have the word appreciate. Appreciate. The first word that we go with this is value. When you appreciate something, you value it. Appreciate is also be grateful. And uh, be careful with the spelling of the word grateful and great. So great will have the word great as G-R-E-A-T. That means large in size or appealing. So if that is great means that's good to some extent. But when you say be grateful, it means you are appreciative of what has been done. Again, we have another word, the third word, which means same as appreciate, is um, be thankful. Be thankful. When you are thankful, it means you are appreciate what has been done for you or to you. Next will be our number nine on the listing, but this question number 17 for KCP 2013. People who wanted to buy supplies gathered at the entrance. Remember, these people wanted to buy supplies. They are not selling. They want to get. So how do you buy something? You give money and then the product is given to you. So as long as you're the one giving money for a product or a service to be given unto you, then we call that a customer. So that uh, number, that's number nine for our listing. The answer will be customer. What about buyers? Buyers are those, uh, I mean, buyers and customers are more or less the same. Sorry. Buyers and customers are more or less the same. They have the same uh, definition. Those who give money to receive a product or a service. Then we have um, sellers. Sellers is the opposite of uh, a buyer. And what does that tell you? A seller is not a customer. A seller is one who is giving the commodity to the customer. He's giving the commodity to the customer. And so should you meet the word commodity, that is just a product. Then our answer for number nine will therefore be customers, people uh, who wanted to buy supplies gathered at the entrance. That will be customers. At number 10, according to our listing, but number 18, according to KCP 2013, the members of the board made a series of decisions. We have decisions and we have a series of decisions. A decision, we normally say, it's something that you have agreed upon. So these are like agreements, but they are not really agreements because they go beyond this. They go beyond just an agreement. We call them, we call them resolution. A series of decisions are called resolutions. You decide you want to do this, and then you agree on it. You have resolved to do that thing. That's called a resolution. An agreement, uh, we can say it's a written or a formal, uh, a formal decision written down that you're going to do this and this thing. You have agreed to do it. You have allowed yourself to follow that rule. That's an agreement. Then we have um, suggestion to come up with an idea. That's to suggest, come up with an idea. We have proposal. Proposal and suggestion are more or less the same. When you propose something, you give an idea, either it will be approved or disapproved. We'll go to number 11 on our listing, that is 2016, number 19. The noise made by the ducks. We have different uh, uh, sounds made by animals. We have quacking, according to our listing. We have squawking, we have cackling, and we have clacking. If I may start from letter D, clacking is made by chicken, especially when they are just dealing with their small chicks. That's clacking. So you can say a hen clacks. What about cackling? Cackling is made mainly by goose, by the goose. And then we have a squawking. Squawking is made by a hen as well, but when the hen is angry. It's an angry, high-pitched tone made by a hen. We call that squawking. And then lastly, we have quacking. That is a normal sound made by a duck. So what's our answer? And the noise made by the ducks was annoying. That is quacking. Next, we go to number 12 according to our listing. That is 2018, number 16 and 17. That will be our number 12 and 13. The pupil was dashed from school for misbehavior. When you misbehave in school, there are two things that are likely to happen. One, you can be suspended. So what is suspension? 
suspension, you are given a small period to go home and think about your behavior. Formulate a plan to change your behavior, then come back to school. That is suspension. But what about you are dismissed? When you are dismissed, you cannot be dismissed from a school. You are dismissed from an activity that you are doing. For instance, you are in the field uh, playing or doing an activity and then the teacher says you are dismissed. It means you can now do your own things other than what had been planned to be done. Then we have expelled. Now, that's a very key word. To expel, you are sent away from school or an institution for a period that you will not even be allowed back in the same institution. So when you're expelled, you are not allowed back. You are sent away for good, if I can use that word. That means there is no chance for you coming back. Suspension, there is a chance to come back. The general um, timing for Kenya school suspension is two weeks. Expulsion, there is no coming back. You pick everything. You are deregistered from a given institution because you are no longer part of them. And for you to be expelled, it must be a very, very serious uh, mistake. In the courts of law, we'll call that um, to be a serious offense. Or uh, we call it felony sometimes. Or a capital offense, if I may go to the extreme. Um, so what's our answer for that? Then our answer for that is going to be the, uh, the pupil was expelled. Now let's look at number 13 of the same. That is number 17 of 2018. Uh, the damage caused by the fire is dashed to be about 50,000 shillings, but the exact amount is not known. Now, if an exact amount is not known, what does that mean? We are simply estimating. We are not sure of the exact amount, so we are estimating. So, the damage caused by the fire is estimated. Once you estimate, the danger of estimating is this. If, uh, for instance, the Muduro market burns down, the stalls burn down, then uh, we have uh, an estimate of 6 million, 6 million shillings. An estimate of 6 million shillings being given as a compensation. The danger is the damage may be below this. It may even be at 2 million or at 10 million. That is more than this. So there's a danger of estimate, but to estimate means you have to come up with a figure which is likely to favor those who have been uh, hurt in a given, uh, maybe in a fire, for instance, for the question here. But uh, the other uh, thing is that uh, when estimate, you can also estimate the cost of something. It's not necessarily for danger. You can estimate the cost of shoes, maybe 2,000 shillings. When you go and buy, you'll find it's either 1,500 or 2,500, or exactly uh, 2,000 as such. Then let's look at uh, question number 16 to 18 of uh, 2019. The boy Dash that had taken the wallet, but nobody believed him. The boy Dash that he had taken the wallet, but nobody believed him. So we have the option there, refused, denied, objected, and disagreed. Now, to deny is to say that you did not do something. That one you denied, saying that you didn't do something. To disagree is to differ in opinion. So the two class distractors were disagreed and denied. To refuse and uh, disagree is more or less the same. You refuse to follow a given protocol. It means you differ with the opinion given. So deny, you say you did not do something, and then disagree is simply to differ in opinion. Next, we have number 17 of 2019, 2019. They did not show any dash for the help he had given them. Remember, we looked at um, appreciate, we looked at uh, be thankful, we looked at um, uh, we have appreciate, be thankful, be grateful, we looked at all that. Now, they did not show any dash for the help he had given them. We, we also should have mentioned the word gratitude. So they did not appreciate, they did not show any gratitude. So to show gratitude is simply to appreciate. Uh, kindness, to, uh, to be kind. I mean, use that word, to be kind, is to do something good to a person in need. To do something good to a person in need. For instance, you can provide a shelter to the homeless. That means you have a kind heart. That's as far as kindness is concerned. So here, help given to them in the past. When something is done unto you, you don't show kindness. You appreciate what has been done unto you. To show kindness means doing something good to a person who is in need. Now, if someone helped you and then you help them when they are in need, 
that is to show kindness you are not appreciating to appreciate or show gratitude you simply say thank you for this or you show it through action as well someone has um, maybe paid your school fees you can show gratitude by working hard in school and then later on when you make it in life you can also remember those who are in need you're still showing gratitude anyway next we have um, the police arrested the motorist for dash the speed limit now a speed limit in Kenya every vehicle that plies our roads has a given speed limit for instance our passenger service vehicle which is under the TLB the transport and licensing board has a speed limit of 80 kilometers per hour what about the private vehicles we have those that are given a speed limit of 100 kilometers per hour we have those that have a speed limit of 150 kilometers per hour now what if a passenger service vehicle that is uh, under the transport and licensing board it goes beyond 80 kilometers per hour that tells you this person has exceeded the speed so to exceed is to go beyond a given limit the speed limit something else that you have to also be aware of is that we have speed governors what is the work of the speed governors a speed governor is to remind you not to exceed a given speed it's just a reminder that do not go beyond the speed so once your speed uh, the speedometer reaches uh, hits 80 you'll hear a beeping sound that is a speed governor telling you that do not exceed that limit sometimes you'll have a temporary um, let me call it a deceleration you don't accelerate it decelerates a little bit then you'll know that um, you reach your speed limit and the speed governor is telling you to check on the same now these are just but uh, the areas that uh, we had uh, I intended that uh, you cover by giving you the work and uh, as you keep on revising remember don't just go for the answer go for the correct answer and then as you're going for the correct answer analyze use the available resources you can use the internet and when you're using the internet be wary of the type of English we learn in Kenya we use the British English so anytime you use the internet to find the meaning of a word remember to check is it American English or British English check all the options when it comes to uh, vocabulary otherwise more and more work will be posted for instance today you'll receive a paper through our groups and then do that work on time and uh, all shall be well otherwise have uh, a nice time and uh, be safe as we keep uh, keep looking forward to a good day ahead otherwise thank you very much